All right, in this video, I wanna talk quickly about one of the most misunderstood and improperly used tools that we work with, and that is the core remover tool. When these tools first came out, they were primarily used to replace damaged cores from a system that still had the charge in it. And that's still a really great function for these tools. So if you have a system where one of these little Schrader cores has a leaking seal or is bent or something of that nature, and you gotta get it out of there, but you don't want to recover or pump down the entire system, then you can attach your core remover tool and you can remove that core and put a new one into the system. And it's a very simple first step that you wanna follow whenever you're removing a core is make sure that your core remover tool, the actual part that's gonna remove the core, is nice and tight around the head of a core. So just take a core that you've got from your truck, maybe the one you're gonna put back in, and make sure that it grabs it nice and tight. So that way it's gonna pull it out. You can see this one here is nice and tight. So all you do when you wanna remove the core, you attach it onto the port. There's no core depressor in the end of your core remover tool, so no refrigerant's gonna come out when you attach this onto the port. You then Tighten it all the way down, make sure everything's snug. Do not over tighten onto the port itself because there are O-rings in here that can become squeezed. And when that happens, sometimes it makes it more difficult for that core to be removed. Press it all the way in until it seats on the core. You can kind of feel it. And then you start to twist counterclockwise until the core completely unthreads. You pull it all the way out. Then you shut the valve and that isolates now this pocket right here from the rest of the system. So now you can remove this and pull the core out. If everything was adjusted properly and it wasn't too tight or too loose, the core should be inside the core remover tool. This is the same process that you would use if you're working on a system when you're going to, say, recover the refrigerant charge. Only in that case, you're not doing it because you wanna replace the core, you're doing it because you wanna have better flow out of the valve. Schrader cores are tiny and they have very tiny openings in them, so when they're just depressed, when they're just pushed in, they allow very low flow. If you use, say, the typical end on a set of refrigerant hoses or gauges or probes. They have a very small little depressor on there which further restricts the flow that pushes down on the end of that core and it opens the core by pushing it down a little bit. It's perfectly fine for doing measurements but it is not designed for getting a lot of flow in and out. So for vacuum or for recovery, it's a really inefficient process. When you are using a core remover tool for vacuum or recovery, once the cores are completely out, you wanna have these ends off. And then this is where you connect your vacuum hose or your recovery hose. Now we suggest having completely separate vacuum hoses for, from recovery hoses, very large vacuum hoses that are designed to handle vacuum and they're not gonna be contaminated with the oil from the refrigerant, which is then gonna slow down your vacuum procedure. But regardless, you wanna always connect them onto the end. The side port has a straighter in it and it's specifically for you to connect a gauge and mostly a micron gauge. If you're doing maybe recovery or something like that, you could then hook a pressure gauge on here. In some cases people will also hook a charging hose here with a ball valve like this one and then they can actually hook a hose from here all the way back to their charging tank so now that way once they get done with their vacuum they can break their vacuum with a little bit of vapor refrigerant in order to get it above atmospheric pressure before they put their cores in and this is a really key point you never ever ever want to, after you've pulled your vacuum, do anything about putting the core back in until you have broken that with pressure. So it's okay when this valve is shut for you to take this hose off. Keep in mind that at that point, there is gonna be just a little tiny bit of air that gets in here. But what you can do is you can take your refrigerant hose now and hook it on here, leave it cracked so that way it purges. And just by kind of forcing a little bit of refrigerant in there, it's gonna fo force most of that air out. Then tighten it down and then open your valve, allow refrigerant to go into the system to bring it up above atmospheric pressure. So to break the vacuum with refrigerant. And then once you're up above atmospheric pressure, then you can put your core back in, but not until then. Don't try putting your core back in until you have broken your vacuum with refrigerant and gotten it up over atmospheric pressure. You're not venting because once you get done breaking it, you're gonna close the valve, you're gonna put this back on with your, with your Schrader in place. Just like this, you're gonna insert it into your core remover tool. You're gonna open your valve and then you're going to put your core 
back into the system and thread it in. But again, only once you're above atmospheric pressure. The next thing that comes up a lot is a lot of folks are worried about connecting their micron gauge properly. If you're using a connector like this, 45 degree connector from BlueVac, it has one end that has a quarter presser on it and it has one end that's completely open. You wanna connect the side with the quarter presser onto the core remover tool because the core remover tool has a Schrader port. If you connect it the wrong way, you're not gonna measure anything because you're not gonna be depressing that Schrader. So you have to put the part that has the core depressor onto the valve unless you use something like a separate core depressor tool on the side of your CRT on the side of your core remover tool. And this is actually a really good idea anyway. It gives you full control over your core. So if you turn it clockwise, it's gonna allow flow, allow you to measure vacuum. And then when you're ready to charge the system, now you don't have to remove any of this because you wouldn't want to. If you try to remove any of this while you were under vacuum, then you would allow air into the system. So you don't wanna pull your micron gauge off when you're under vacuum. You don't wanna to try to put your cores back in while you're under vacuum. You need to wait until you get it above atmospheric. By putting a core depressing tool on the side of your core remover tool, it gives you full control over whether or not you're allowing flow to your micron gauge and turn whether or not you could be contaminating the sensor or damaging the gauge. Now this particular gauge, this blue vat gauge can handle a lot of pressure. You're not gonna hurt it, but some gauges maybe not. And some people just don't wanna expose their micron gauge to refrigerant. And so this is a way to do that. Another method you could use you could pull the core completely out and you could use a ball valve like this one here. But just keep in mind that when you use a ball valve for this purpose, you need to make sure that it doesn't have a leaky O-ring here. That's common that some of these designs can leak under vacuum because you're measuring such a fine level of pressure. You wanna make sure that the ball valve itself isn't gonna give you a false reading. But if you hook it up in this way with the core completely removed, now you can use a ball valve to control whether or not pressure's hitting your micron gauge. But all in all, keep in mind, do you have a core in place? Is it being depressed or not? Make sure that you're connecting your vacuum or your recovery hoses to the end of this, not to the side, and then consider using something like a core depressor or a ball valve to help protect your micron gauge and whether or not anything's hitting it. And as always, don't remove anything other than this end hose with the valve shut before you actually get the system under positive pressure. Because if you try to pull your micron gauge off the side or you try to put your core back in, you completely lost your vacuum and you wasted all of that effort that you just spent all this time doing so properly. So hopefully you found that helpful. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.